Hey, Penn State fans. How are you? I'm Bob Flounders, joined by Dave Jones in Downingtown. I'm in Harrisburg. It's time to do the Blue White Breakdown podcast, talk some Penn State football. A lot to get to on that front after James Franklin's spring news conference kickoff on Monday. But we got to start. We got to start with our guy Dave Jones and his, I don't want to say he was a national story, but he was he was part of the national stage when we were talking about the NCAA men's basketball tournament on Sunday in Pittsburgh. He met some dude on the Houston basketball team up close and personal, Dave, and I'm just glad you're doing okay. Yeah, man. If you've done enough of those, has that ever happened to you in, in any uh, – Did, did I ever get over? To you or anything? Uh, yeah. No, no. But it has to be quite the adrenaline moment when you see it's coming and there's no way to avoid it. Yeah, it, it happens in slow motion. You know it's going to happen. A loose ball bounces toward you, and it's the NCAA tournament. And if you're in yeah. a certain – it's kind of like sitting in box seats before they had screens along the first baseline. You've got to you you got to be your head, your head's got to be on a swivel, right? Mm-hmm. Because that those things can kill you. Uh, you never have little kids down there. You just don't right. take them down there because a, a foul, a, a screaming liner, a baby killer can can get strike at any time. And and I was in the probably the prime seat is about three seats up from the baseline. If a ball, it, that's where balls can come at you. The, the 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 players are very close, and if a ball comes at you, you better be ready. And I'm too old to get out of the way anymore. It, mm-hmm. It's kind of like when per, Paterno got freight trained by who was that on the side? Yeah, Andre Levy in 2006, Wisconsin. Yeah. And I don't know. I couldn't have gotten out of the way of this anyway. It just happens too quickly. The chairs are crappy. You know, you can't you can't scoot back, and you'd have to have a roller chair. Yeah. And um, uh, uh, Tajay Moore, a uh, kid from Houston, uh, was coming right at me. And, you know, although it happens, it looks like it's in slow motion, like all accidents. It's, it's not. <laughs> it, it is. Um, it's an experience. And he came right over the table, right into my lap. Uh, I guess I went over backwards. I still haven't seen a video of it. Uh, my laptop went flying. I think I'm everyone on the beat has uh, their own video of it, Dave. If you want to reach out to like Audrey Snyder, I think they all got their Brennan. I think they the all video. got their own videos. Well, I didn't worry about it because I, I, you know, I got up, I was fine. I got yeah, a little bit of a bruise on on my on my chest, but the kid could not have been a, a better. Yeah, a nicer person. He's big. The next thing I know, I'm on my back, and there's this face right, guy right in my face, going, "You okay, man? You okay, man? Let <laughs> let me help you up." And he's busting his ass. Right? It's the middle of the second half of a tightly contested game with Illinois, and he's being so nice to me. And he's he offers his hand like this. I see his hand coming at me, and I try. It's actually like this, and I try to grab it, and I, I grab it, but. He can't pull me up because uh, I'm, I'm like, ah, I've fallen and I can't get up. You know, I'm the old the old person. And so I say, I'm I'm OK. I'm OK. And I get up on my own. And then he, he hands me my here's here's your computer. He, he hands me my wow. laptop. Yeah, just the, the greatest kid in the world. And I uh, I took a selfie with him after the game because I told That's the Houston cool. uh, SID I, I probably should should take a selfie just to, to, to show everyone what a nice kid he, he seemed to be. And this is, this is what did I, you, uh, did you put it on Twitter? Yeah, I put it on Twitter here. And this is, this is, this that is, is a cool selfie. guy. How big is he? Yeah. He was like, he's like, he's a guard, but he's a big guard. He's like six. He's five. Yeah. 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 He's a big, big kid. And That's I said, cool that I, hel- I helped him. I helped him down the steps from the, uh, the interview dais. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Dave, just a quick follow-up question: Are you going to sue the NCAA or the University? Of <laughs> this is hilarious. You know, every minute after that, for the entire second half and the between games before the Ohio State Villanova game, people are coming up and saying, "You okay? You okay?" But sometime in the in, uh, uh, the, the one of the soonest people was an NCAA representative, of course, saying, Representative Mark Emmert. 
or are you are you basically covering their ass you know oh, yeah. saying are you are you in any way hurt here do you feel any pains because we have doctors who can look at you right now if you want and i said i'm fine I, this is, happens to people all the time if you're on press row especially in that seat i i said i've been i've been taking charges since you were in diapers uh it, it was it was it was funny because I, uh, the only time I can remember somebody like uh, getting freight trained like that basically was Lori Schantz. Remember Ooh. from the uh, Pittsburgh yeah. Post Gazette at the Big East tournament, I think, or, or it was either the Big East tournament or the NIT in like mm -hmm. 1998. And I mean, yeah. she got flattened and, and, her laptop was wrecked. It was back in the day when these things weren't yeah. so light and her laptop is crushed. It's like, it's the screen is like cracked. It was like an IBM ThinkPad or something back in those days. And she, she really got like a forearm in the face and she gets up and she's crying. I mean, she, oh. she was just a little, little person. Uh, and that was right next to me, but I, I, I haven't, it hadn't happened directly yeah. to me in a long time. No. If you could have thought of it on the fly, Dave, if you remember the scene in Caddyshack where Ted Knight hits that ball and hits Rodney Dangerfield, I think in his arm and Rodney immediately starts grabbing everything on his body and he's going to threaten to do I well, think, I, I, was I, country club. Dan Watts or something, somebody, I can't remember, Brendan Quinn, somebody te texted me that I should show up the next day in a neck brace. <laughs> 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 and write a direct note to Mark Emmert, not from me, but from my lawyer. And you, know, that you, know, you know a bunch of lawyers. Like, you could have brought them <laughs> I should have lawyered up and claimed there should have been netting in front of Press Row, and this was negligence, and I'll be waiting for your phone call. Undisclosed yes. settlement. Undisclosed yeah. settlement. Anyway, <laughs> I'm glad you're all right. Let's talk some Penn State football. Uh, we t For the last three, four weeks, Dave, we've talked about how will James Franklin – handle his quarterback room this offseason, specifically in spring. He's got a quarterback that's going to be 24 this summer, and Sean Clifford, he's got some He's got some very, very talented young guys behind him. And Ben Jones of StateCollege.com uh, pretty much asked the question that uh, really kind of – he phrased it the right way. He said, you know what, James? There's a lot of Penn State fans that are just waiting to see one of these young quarterbacks perform really, really well, and if that happens – <laughs> that, that might, they might not be that thrilled with Sean Clifford at some point this year because of... Is that the way you worded it? I'm paraphrasing it, Dave. The actual okay. question is on. But it was generally like how, you know, is it even conceivable for a guy that's going to be a four-year starter to have to worry about his job uh, is, is, was also part of the question. And James, you know, kind of, he talked about it, but he, he pretty much outlined, the, outlined his answer as, uh, you know, competition's great. We're, hopefully we're going to work all these guys in. I'm really excited that Sean Clifford's going to get to work a second year with Mike Yersich. Uh, but is it realistic? Probably not. So I know uh, I, I just think that Sean Clifford's the guy until he gets hurt this year. Now, I, I don't even know there's a chance he's, he can get beaten out. You know, even if James Franklin believes that. Yep. And I just learned this this morning you know, because uh, you told me, I, you know, my head's been in the sand from basketball and, and dr uh, driving back. I didn't I didn't hear that yesterday, even mm -hmm. if he believes it. And maybe he believes it. But why would you believe it after the last three years? Am I am I wrong there? Why would you no. believe that it's unrealistic? Yeah, let's let's start with that point. Well, let me should go. Let me, just, you, let, me, Dave, let me just. I'm just gonna. Just so you know, I'm gonna get the question up in its entirety. Just so. Just so we're clear well, on this. I, I saw the answer, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, I, but I, I just wanted you to know. Answer. I want you to know what the question was that okay. he actually answered. So here you go. You ready? Go. This is this is Ben. It's a little bit long. Sometime between now and next year, Sean is going to throw a bad pass, and people are going to go. <laughs> they should play Drew, or they should play Christian, but I don't think. More people would probably say Drew because no, I think I think more people would probably say Drew because they're excited, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. How do you nip that dynamic in the bud internally and externally? And what are the parameters for a guy who's never played college football somehow beating out a guy who started for three years 
in spring ball? Is this even a conversation that people should be having in the first place? And how do you weigh that somebody is breathing down your neck dynamic that's kind of been different than it has been for the rest of his career? And I'll ask you a question. Has Ben Jones taken over my spot in wordy, convoluted, 45-second <laughs> questions? Uh, it was a – I mean, I think we all kind of got the kernel of the question because we've all kind of been saying it in one way was, or the other. But it what? was, I thought – and, and James when, answered. When I, when I was Ben's age, I used to ask questions exactly like that, and I pretty much still do, that I yeah. take way too long. But but it's a good question. Right. Um, and and – Fans' perception versus reality yeah. versus your thoughts. Yeah, what, what, and get, let's, and James answered it. Look, look, it, it's like this. Even if you believe that it's unrealistic, why would you say that? Yeah. Why would you say that it's unrealistic when you want to give, if you really right. believe in competition, if you really right. believe that competition's good for everybody, then, then say that the competition is a level playing field instead of, tilted toward Clifford from the get-go, right? Why yeah. would you say to Veyu and Alar, uh, whoever, whoever yeah. the, the candidates are, especially if you've got a five-star coming in yeah. these days with the transfer portal, he can, he, he's probably talking to his family and it's been all sorts of God knows who in Ohio are saying, say you shouldn't have gone there in the first place. <laughs> he's not going to give you a real chance to start. It's almost setting yourself up. Yeah. For problems. And yeah. if James Franklin is really the CEO, as he's supposed to be, this is the stuff he's supposed to be good at. You know, yeah. let, this, it, let, it, let it act like it is a competition, an yeah. even competition, even if you don't believe it in your head for, for valid reasons. But I wouldn't even believe it in my head at this point. I would want Sean Clifford to believe, look, your job is on the line. You've been fine. The, yeah. the last three years, but you haven't been any great shakes. We've got a five-star commit, and we're going to give him a, a real look. Um, he should be leaving it open completely, even ex in the exterior, as he likes to call it, in yeah. my opinion. Okay, so what's your reaction to that? Well, I mean, and he did say, well, I might have a different answer after six or seven practices, but I, I'm not buying that at all. He's He's made his decision – uh, and I think if you just look at what he's done every year, Dave, you know, he, he took over a team with Christian Hackenberg. Um, Sean McStorley was a true freshman, so he was always going to redshirt in 2014. He continued to play Hackenberg in 2015 when he was miserable, even though by that point, Dave, McStorley was starting to show signs in practice that he was going to be. Know, you know, you just said Sean McSorley. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, <laughs> <laughs> you That's remember a great name. Yeah, James well, McSorley. you remember you remember you remember when I used to every question yeah. I asked Clifford was related to McSorley, and he finally said, "What about this man? Come on." <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you would you know, would love this. Yeah, Trace McSorley in 2015. You saw what he find when Hackenberg got hurt in that bowl game. It took him a couple series, but he would look like Trace McSorley that was going to be this right away. Was. Right away. But I'll give you Franklin stayed with Hackenberg. And then once McSorley beat out Stevens or Stevens, 16, 17, 18. Tommy had no choice. Tommy goes into 2019 spring as he's going to be the starter, but he got hurt and he couldn't play. That's the only reason Clifford passed him. And then Stevens got so frustrated he transferred. But at no point is James ever really given, I don't think, uh, the contenders a good look at the job. I, and I just think that, boy, if ever you're going to do it, it has to be this year. After you after you have the year that you have, after you drop six of your, of your uh, last eight games to close out the season, you lose all this talent. You're placing Jahan Dotson. The offensive line is very much in flux. The schedule, I mean, it is, it's going to be challenging again, especially early. But that, that, to me, sounded like James saying there was literally no chance those guys had a chance to catch Sean this year maybe the whole year. And I just, I, I don't know that you're right. I don't know that he should have said it that way. In every way, it's bad yeah. messaging. And that's yeah. what press conferences are. They're he had messaging. no question was coming. That's what I don't understand. Yeah, they're, they're messaging. The press conferences are messaging. They're not really even meant sometimes for us. 
They're meant yeah. for the team and the fans. And when you send it, you're, you're saying stuff. You're saying it to the team. And what are you saying here? Well, there's not really a competition. Yeah, that, is, that is what you're saying. That is the message that's being heard, even if it's not exactly what you said. And I think it's completely the wrong message, given the record of the team the last couple of years, as you said, given the fact that the transfer portal changes everything. If you don't feel like you're getting a, a real shot or you've got, you know, spring practice to prove yourself, this is like Joe Paterno stuff. This is like this is like 2001 where Matt Seneca was going to be the quarterback, uh, hell or high water, and he played for the first four games, and then Zach Mills comes in in October at a point where he can't save the season, and he would have if he'd started yeah. straight away. Uh, it, it isn't exactly like that because Seneca was right. never an incumbent. But right. to, to me, it's the same kind of attitude. And I don't understand it anyway. Uh, I, I was yeah. kind of stunned. The yeah. more, the more, the more work you give Sean in the off season, it, it makes it even more unlikely that this could even happen. And it's just, I know he's got he's got the he's got the long contract now, and he can afford to do whatever he wants. Maybe he answers the question differently <laughs> if he doesn't have that con. I don't know, Dave, but I just I thought he would answer it differently too. But it, I all signs point to Sean being the guy again all the way through 2022. And maybe he'll make uh, the fans and all of us eat our words and he'll have a picket-like resurgence. And I don't care I if just, he does. I don't I know care the old quarterbacks just don't want to hear that. I don't care if he does. No quarterbacks, quarterbacks want to hear it. No, no quarterbacks really want to hear that. Even the yeah. incumbent doesn't want to really hear that, I don't think. You, no. want, you, want, you welcome competition. What is the harm of saying the job is open? The job yep. is over. It makes everyone work harder. And why should it not be open? That's that's that. Yeah. As but he could. Robert, what if he said? What if he says the job is open and then he gives all the reps to Sean Clifford in, in April and August? Well, I mean, well that's he, hypothetical. He, that's a hypothetical we can't deal with. But I mean, I can see De Niro, that too. <laughs> as Robert De Niro once said, "This is this. This ain't something else. This is this. It's a competition. Yeah. It's a competition." Yeah. And we're at the point where it should be. I mean, I, I don't get it. But okay, enough of that stuff. Go enough ahead. of that stuff. Uh, you know, a couple other things. I mean, everyone. The quarterback thing to me was, was a big deal. The offensive line. It just real. Dave. It just really. He keeps talking about being committed to the running game, fixing it. But it's got to be. Everyone's got to do their part. I'm like, oh, the offensive line has to do their part more than anyone else. But. You know, the, the running backs got to make people miss. The tight ends got to block better. Sean Clifford's got to make better plays, make, make the right calls at the line of scrimmage. You know, it's the offensive line never looked physically ready to take over a game at any point uh, last year, even against bad teams, even against Villanova. And I'm like, what is going on? And this team, I don't think this offensive line, who knows uh, the way he, the way they're looking at lining them up, man, it's, it's a lot of, Fingers crossed and and stuff like that, but I, I just I I think the offensive line, it's hard to see them taking a step forward in twenty twenty two. I hate to say it like that. Well, you're going to have some youth. Uh, you are, you are. And anytime you have, uh, I don't think there's any way to avoid it. Do you? There's some some extreme. Yeah, youth. yeah they, got, they have they have a, a Caden Wallace is, is going to be a three year starter, but essentially everyone else is going to be in their first year as a starter. Which does first. not it, – it, it might work at other positions, might work at running back, might work at skill positions, so so-called skill positions, might work at wide out, might even work at uh, even uh, your best cover corner. Uh, yeah. It's possible because yeah. that was a lot of gift going on there. But offensive line or like middle linebacker, those are not positions where you can yeah. have – inexperience and not pay for it so yeah <laughs> I, I again i go back and, and people are going to get sick of hearing this but sometimes i would just i would see the way they ran the ball at incongruous moments last year it was all almost as if they were trying to prove they could do it at weird spots in games instead of yeah. knowing they could do it and building a game plan around a cogent uh 
together kind of philosophy, which they never had. They never knew who they were. And yeah. so that doesn't help the offensive line either. Yeah. Just, I just run it when it makes sense to run it if, and, and, and get the yards you need to get. Don't get stoned on third and one. And in the, late in the game, if you're up six points, uh, run the ball. Run the ball. Do not, you know, put, have a little faith in your running, your running game, your offensive line. I mean, all the teams that beat Penn State last year, Dave, ran the ball on them, and they ran the ball on them very well. You could go through all, all the way through the teams that beat them. They all were able to run the ball on Penn State. Except and for even Auburn. Auburn. And even Auburn. Uh, yeah, Auburn. Auburn oh, yeah, which, Tank Bigsby and that freshman. Yeah, yeah, which do not I mean, most, I think they had eight or nine guys go over a hundred yards. That Illinois, that Illinois game, they didn't, they didn't even, they didn't even dress, they didn't even try and hide it. They just ran the ball right down their face. Like you have to be able to do that at some point if you're going to win. Michigan State ran it. Michigan ran it. Ohio State stayed patient with it, and eventually the running game paid off in the second half when he got loose on that long run. But everyone was able to run the ball, even Wisconsin. Uh, they just had Graham Mertz in the red zone to just short circuit everything. But no, they were able start, to run the ball. Don't start in on Graham Mertz. It's again, too late, okay? Dave. That ship has sailed. Right, I'm going right. to start in on it. Have you had mean, enough? Uh, they, they gave up on the run in the Outback Bowl. They gave up on the run, you know, against Maryland. They were running the ball on Maryland. They gave up on the run against Maryland. It's like, come on, man. Well, what's going on? I don't know what's going to be more curious. Uh, the play of the quarterbacks early in the season or the play of the running backs, but fans are always geeked up about the quarterbacks. I'll be the dummy watching the offensive line. Everyone else is going to be really looking at the No, as you should, as you should, because it'll make, it'll mean all the difference. But can you, can you even name any instances where an inexperienced offensive line started the season with a bang? No. Especially at, yeah. Especially at Penn state. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know what I yeah. mean? It's like, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to think. Uh, they're, they're, I, James has a lot of faith in his offensive assistant coaches to develop players. And I think Stubblefield certainly has shown he can do that. But I think the jury is out on Phil Troutline. Even though Ty Howell is in his, only in his second year, he's never really played tight end. Uh, Jaywan Sider, I think, you know what? <laughs> Some of those, a lot of those guys have not worked out, Dave. He has, he's seen, and Mike Yursich, I know it's only year two, but. The team averaged 25 points a game, averaged 3.2 yards per carry, uh, and they, they 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 got worse. They didn't get better. So I don't I don't know. I a lot's going to happen between have to happen between uh, the end of spring practice and uh, you know late August for this team to have turned the corner. All right, I what would you do? What knowing who what the weaponry is, knowing what the personnel is. Which your There's a couple, idea? There, so there are a couple wild cards, right? Uh, the Western Kentucky wide receiver, Mitchell Tinsley, uh, looks the part of uh, a legit receiver. Um, productive. He's making a, tw- a change in the offense, uh, a change to another offense. He's a guy. That freshman running back, Singleton, uh, could crack, could actually be the primary back by midseason, and he could be Barkley-esque. Uh, I like Kevon Lee, but Singleton was special. Uh special in high school but eventually what are we really talking about can 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 they score enough points and that translates to really how is the quarterback going to play in the red zone how is he going to do you know what how's he going to how's he going to play all over well, I mean, if he's going to move the ball between the 20s what does that really mean if they if they're settling for field goal attempts in the red zone they're going to score 23 points in a game and they're going to get beat 80 percent of the time well this better be a quick strike offense because they're not going to have a lot of time I mean, I, I don't mean quick strike. I mean quick, quick plays. Yeah, quick, they I can't take any any long drops with this offense. So again, who's your better quarterback uh, choice? I don't know. You want someone who who knows what's going on out there at a high speed college level. So I yeah. get that. But uh, at, Sean Clifford at, has proven over time that he yeah. kind of holds the ball a little too long yeah. and tends to think he's a little more mobile than he is, and that's not a good combination. Yeah. At the very least, Dave, they have to they have to have the second quarterback ready to go from the first week. And that was not the case last year. That's really never been the case under him. And that when you have all young quarterbacks behind Sean Clifford, when are you going to give them the reps so they can be ready? When are you going to do it? Well, the only reps that are worth anything are live reps in meaningful minutes. 
Yeah. Um, you, you've seen everyone. You saw you saw Jim Harbaugh do that last year. I mean, McCarthy he gave and it, McNamara, right? Yeah, he 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 had the the freshman in there given given him important reps. I didn't necessarily agree with it simply because I thought McNamara yeah. was playing pretty well. And and he looked like he was in command, and then he would bring the freshman in, and you were going, "What McCarthy? What's he doing in there?" Uh, but he did it for a reason. He did it because he didn't want McCarthy to transfer. He, he yeah. wants to, to make sure that he believes that he's a part of this picture, and that he wants him to be ready if he needs him to come in. Which again, Penn State was not ready at Iowa. They didn't have a, a, a backup ready to come in at a, at a tough moment. Clearly. Yeah. They, they no. didn't have it. Would it be fair for either Veyu or Allard to, to be able to be forced in there in such a, a moment as at Iowa? No. You, you These days you have to give the rookies, yeah. and Veyu isn't even a rookie anymore, but you have to give whoever your backup is serious reps in game in important moments. And, boy, yeah. I think they need to do it, and they haven't done it so far. Yeah, Dave, they made it worse. Remember, between the between the Iowa game and the Illinois game, they had a bye week, and he said they were going to get Roberson and Veyu up to speed, and they gave all the reps to Clifford, who was still hurt. Clifford was hurt, and he was and hurt. He function after the first quarter, when whatever he was taking to manage the pain wore off, and they just got worse. So he they, he keeps doubling down on this. I don't. You got to commit to the whole room inside. You, you can't just. You just can't tie it all to one guy, especially if that one guy has never proven really to be a difference maker. Uh, you know, he's he's going to be 24, and again, he could surprise us, but I don't know, Dave. He's a, he, he's a tough kid. He plays hurt. He, get, he does get beat up, and then you don't have the guy ready to play behind him. They only, they're only able to beat Rutgers because they were Rutgers. You know what I mean? They could have easily lost that game. They were Rutgers at the end of the season. Maybe yeah. if they play Rutgers when Michigan played Rutgers, it's a different story. Yeah. Uh, that was a beat-up Rutgers team. If, if you remember, Rutgers went into Michigan and gave them all they could handle in the middle of the season. It was a very different team. And yeah. I think you're going to see that team progress over time, a lot like uh, Steve Peichel's basketball team has progressed in, in the same way. It'll be slow, but it will be sure. And you're not going to be able to count on beating – either Rutgers or Maryland with a substandard product anymore. I think Rutgers is very well coached and is getting talent. I think Maryland has a lot of talent, uh, not yeah. probably as well uh, <coughs> conceived as far as their offense. But either either of those programs, you know, if they didn't have to play them at the end of the season when they were all beat up, uh, they could beat Penn State. Both teams, those are, those, are the, yeah. those are the rivalry those, if they had to play Maryland or Rutgers these days, early in the season, uh, unlike 2019 when they they bulldozed them, Maryland 59 to nothing. Well, Dave, they uh, played him in week three in 2020, and Maryland killed him at Penn State. Remember, Talia yeah. went well, off. Well, I, I, I still throw out. I still throw out 2020 because I just I, I I'm giving yeah. them a, a mulligan on 2020. Uh, the time is coming when. Both Rutgers and Maryland have not better talent or not even equal talent, but comparable talent. And then yeah. it's going to come down to preparation and coaching and development. And I, yeah, where is Penn State there? Yeah. <laughs> I, don't know. Fair I don't know. Question. It's a fair question. Yeah. I think it's going to be an interesting offseason, but maybe for all the wrong reasons. I don't know. We'll see. It just seems like he had a chance. You, like, you said it best, Dave. He had a chance to kind of. He had a chance to not massage the situation, but encourage everyone. Uh, and he, he instead, he basically said it's Sean Clifford. I just don't uh, see any reason not to do that. Yeah. Why would you not do that? There have been other coaches where you they said it, and you, you're you like, come on, because the, right. you knew the incumbent was going to play. I don't think you really know that this time. Why would you not say it? Anyway, and, and enough of that. How's your How's your bracket doing? Uh, it is. It's in flames. I, ha- I only had two. I had, I had Gonzaga winning at winning both of them, but I was uh, it's just Boy. it's just been a, it's a re- it's a just really re- you know. I always wish I'm so impatient, Dave. Like you know, when it comes to like actually betting on games, 
I never save enough bullets for the, the Sunday of the first weekend. Like there were some games that were gettable there. I, you know, I was the Iowa state, Wisconsin under, like it was, it was a funder. There was no way that was going to hit Villanova was going to cover against Ohio state, but no, I have to make all my bets Thursday and Friday when I have no earthly idea who's going to win. And then I, then I think the most bettable games are always that first Sunday because you know a little bit more about each team's. Ohio State can't score at all either. The Big Ten was flailing around. I just, uh, I just got to learn to be a little bit more patient. Well, the the only, about the only thing I got right is that the Big Ten. What are they at? Two left: long. Michigan and Purdue. Yeah, and the Big Ten does not have guards. They don't have lead guards. They have wing guards. They have a lot of athletes. They have Jaden Ivey and Keegan Murray, and they have uh, uh, they, they've got a lot of wingers who can can really play. Uh, but man, they don't have lead guards. Ohio State didn't. They lost. Uh, Illinois. Illinois is the most talented team that has the most knuckleheaded guys making that are basically uncoached I've ever seen and they have everything else they have everything else they don't go into Kofi Coburn and they don't even try to start the offense with that it's it's a whole league full of no lead guards and you saw with Villanova what what that can do when you you've got a lead guard who really really knows what he he's doing it makes all the difference in the world. But did you did you call it Billy Lang? He doesn't. He's not, he's not really doing anything now. He could have given you some advice. <laughs> Dave, can will, will you quietly, not so secretly, be rooting for Houston now because of that gentlemanly act by that guy <laughs> that comes in over your face? I will say that Tajay Moore. Yes, I, I've become a, a he's new. He's got a special special a place special place in your cold black heart. Doesn't he? Place in, in my cold black card and and uh, right here. And he on also left his imprint on you. On on my uh, clavicle, I won't. I show wouldn't you be that. surprised if Houston somehow gets to the Final Four just because of that interaction. Well, they did it before; they can do it again. They're uh, they're a gritty team, man. They're 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 going to hang around most teams. And uh, I I really gained respect for Villanova this week because man, yeah. they have they have. Jay, every damn year, he just pours guards off the bench, man. There's like four or five or six guys who could be playing, uh, who could be starting. And if they get a couple of guys in foul trouble, they got more in, in foul trouble. Uh, somebody else was in foul trouble. They just keep bringing them off the bench, and they all guard like crazy. They, they press the perimeter, and they also control the perimeter because they've got guys who can face up, who if you get up too close on them, they'll blow by you. And they're, they're coached to do that, and they're really, really good at it. Um, those are the teams to watch out for. I thought Kentucky would be able to do that. And you we know, Dave. Happens. We all know. We all I, I really know. Appreciate, I appreciated the meow on my phone immediately after the St. Peter's game. I didn't do it on Twitter. I didn't do it on Twitter. It was, it was, just a, it was like a direct message. <laughs> uh, it, has anyone's bra- brackets really survived? That's my question. <laughs> <laughs> well, Arizona almost went out in overtime, and you were else you were oh, that should have that should have happened. That that the, Eric Curry is the same, you know the white haired guy, Eric Curry. Yeah, uh, I mean that he just stood there and looked at that foul, and it was a foul at half court near the end of regulation, and just let it go. That that is a that is a standard Eric Curry. If, if you cover the Big Ten as long as I have, you you single out guys who ref the ends of games like that in favor subconsciously of the team that's supposed to win. That's the, the landmark, the, the, the mark of bad refs everywhere. When they get late in games and they just, they almost take the side of the team that's supposed to win because I think subconsciously they, they know it's the, the safe play. I mean, that was outrageous. And he got firebombed, and I don't <laughs> think he's going to show up again in the tournament because they have, it's, it's, uh, it's performance based on whether whether you get into the the later rounds. Who's, who who's going to cut down the nets now? Who's the best team still alive? Oh, why ask me? What do I know? You know? I'm giving you one more chance to redeem yourself. <laughs> uh, You're going to go I, Villanova. I I think they could do it. They have they're kind of small, but man, they have a lot of guys who really guard you, and they can shoot. They they can shoot from three, and these days. 
You control the perimeter, you control the game. Look what we saw with Kofi Coburn. It didn't matter having him. They just double, triple teamed him. And, of course, Illinois didn't even try to get him the ball, which helped. But teams that can guard you and have multiple guards and multiple wingers who can score from the perimeter, who control the arc, those are the teams. That being said, I was impressed with Gonzaga when they got challenged, and I was imp- I was impressed with Drew Timmy. I hadn't seen that kind of grit out of him. Did you watch that game where they no, they, they were blind by ten? I, I bet I bet Gonzaga in their game. first game. Is that the I'm really sorry? skinny yeah. guy? Is that the skinniest the, seven footer in the world? No, 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 no. The, Drew Timmy is their go to big man. He's he's okay. Oh yeah, I know who that is. Yeah. I got you. He can, yeah, he yeah. can both. He can both. He can both shoot from the perimeter. And uh, and bump and grind inside and and work from the low block blocks. He can he can back you in or he can face up. And I didn't really. I wondered whether he was tough enough. In the Memphis game, he showed me he was pretty tough. I mean, he basically scored. He must have scored 15, 16 straight points in that rally, and they were down ten. It was it was looking grim. I think those moments in the tournament tend to give your whole team confidence, both in your leader and the fact that you can overcome. Uh, you remember Michigan with Glenn Rice, one of your favorite teams in 89. Jamil Robinson. Won, yeah, they won. But Glenn Rice was the guy, man. Yeah. Glenn Rice was the man. And they were behind a lot in that tournament where they won. Uh, and they won every game by single digits, I believe. And, and that's that, that whole, all six games in 89. Yeah, they probably they were gifted the uh, Seton Hall game. But but also, I got to I got to give a shout out to Sheen Holloway, who was Probably, you know, one of the, one of the one of the players in the ugly big Big East days that I that I covered back then. But to to get St. Peter's into the Sweet Sixteen is pretty yeah. amazing. I mean, that campus and in, in it's 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 basically down in the in the depths of uh, uh, Jersey is Jersey City or Newark. I can't. It's like a gym anyway. Those mm-hmm. campuses. Those campuses actually have gyms. They look like high school gyms. Coppin yep. State was like that, which was 25 years ago in Pittsburgh. And this is a version of Coppin State. It's, it's amazing. I'm sure Shaheen is going to get the uh, the Seton Hall job uh, now that their coach has left for Maryland. Uh, maybe Maryland should have <laughs> should have should have hired Holloway. Anyway, that to shout out to him because that's an amazing, amazing accomplishment. Which is why the the NCAA tournament is so great. In what other sport? Can a school with like a, I looked up Chattanooga against Illinois, and Illinois should have lost to Chattanooga. They have a total athletic gross revenue of eighteen million dollars. Illinois, a hundred and six million, a hundred and nine million. What other sport does that happen? It doesn't happen anywhere, even Major League Baseball. The Pirates can never do that, I and mean, the Pirates can can't even make the playoffs because. There, there's such an inequity. It can't happen in college football. It doesn't happen in pro football because of, of revenue equity. Um, there is nothing else like it where a little school, a little team with modest um, wherewithal can, can do this against a big school. Something like St. Peter's, Kentucky can only happen in the NCAA tournament, and that's why it's wonderful. All right, Dave, before I go here on the Blue White Breakdown podcast, my promise to you is I know a lot of seedy lawyers, seedy, seedy, not Central Dolphin, seedy lawyers from the bars of Harrisburg because it's the capital oh, and there's lobbyists oh. everywhere. I'm going to get I got you. a pain in my neck. I got a pain right here. <laughs> oh, it's my arm. Uh, you have to I'm stop. Gonna, oh. I'm going to get you a couple of lawyer oh. referrals for the next time you get freight train. So next time you can get paid. That's my promise to you. No, I think we have to revisit this. I think I just felt the pains a couple of days later. Yeah. There's never, so it's never too late. You could have nerve damage. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the best tweet after it was Gordy Jones, who said, it said in, did you see this? He said in his tweet, paterno voice, quote, maybe it'll knock some sense into him. <laughs> 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 All right, Dave. It's time to go. We'll be back next week to talk about probably the tournament and probably Penn State football and probably your health in that order. See you, boys.